Welcome everybody to Treats and Eats with Krista and Jody, where we cook delicious foods. We teach you how to use and cook with your food storage, particularly with freeze-dried foods, which are kind of a learning curve for a lot of people. And typically we focus on what is on sale for the month at Thrive Life. We are both Thrive Life consultants. So some of you may know us from that or from um, our emails or our blogs or anywhere you might have met us in the food storage and cooking world. So today, oh, actually Krista, introduce yourself to say hi. Hi, I'm Krista. Um, yeah, you, she, you said it, who I am. <laughs> I get the whole intro. She's in Arizona, I'm in Pennsylvania, and we do this together every second Tuesday of the month. And so thank you, thank you for joining us. If you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replay too. We do send out all of the recipes at the um, end. It usually takes a couple days to get it all put together. Um, so you don't have to like frantically take notes while we're just going through the cooking, okay? So today I'm super excited. We're gonna show you everything based on the case lot sales at Thrive. So if you live, especially Utah, Idaho, those kind of places, you have case lot sales where you can go and buy like a case of cream of chicken soup and add it to your food storage. So what they're doing with this is, and I don't know if you can see it on my phone. I was going to print this, but I'm out of ink. There is a flyer. Um, maybe we can try to post it in the chat. I'll see if I can do that eventually. Um, but basically, if you buy it in a case, it's six number 10 cans. And you usually get like a 5% discount if you order it in a case. But for this month, these are deeply discounted. So cranberries, 50% off. Cucumbers, 45% off. Granny Smith apples, 35. Blackberries, 35. Zucchini, 35. Mangoes, 35. And applesauce, 25% off. So those are some good deals. And I like buying my food when it's on sale. And then I, you'll see some of my stuff is 10 years old. So I'm cooking with stuff at 10 years ago prices. So... Um, that's definitely the way to go is the cheapest way to get it is when the stuff is on sale. So we're going to just jump in. If there's questions, you guys can catch questions at the end. We'll hang around and talk, but we're going to try to get through this because we have six recipes. There are seven items, but my zucchini bread actually uses two items from the sale. So we're going to make a zucchini bread. Who here has made zucchini bread before? Probably everybody. So Thrive Zucchini Bread, I actually considered making this in a meal in a jar, but I didn't have the exact um, measurements for like to make it only four cups worth of stuff. So I'm just making it, but I am making it with all shelf stable items. So this is everything that's in your food storage. So I am trying it for guinea pigs tonight with Thrive's gluten-free flour in most things like quick breads and muffins and desserty things, the gluten-free flour is fine. Um, so we're gonna see how it works today. Then I've got baking sallow soda, baking powder, salt, nutmeg, and cinnamon powder all in one. So you don't have to watch me measure all those out. See, I'm being efficient. Then for the oil in this recipe, so this recipe actually called for, oh, brand new applesauce. It calls for oil and applesauce, but it says instead of applesauce, you could also use sour cream. So basically things to make it moist and delicious, right? So I'm going to actually replace the oil with applesauce, which I have done in a lot of um, baked goods, and it is good. Applesauce is always, you can replace your fats with beans or applesauce. And in zucchini bread, I didn't really want to do beans, so me and applesauce. So this is one of the case lot items. It is in number 10 cans. Um, I don't go through it super fast. So I use end up using the pantry cans for my cooking, but I do have some number 10, 10 cans in the basement. It calls for two eggs. So we're going to do a quarter cup of eggs. Now, the nice thing is usually in a recipe like this, you would have to mix your dry and then mix your wet ingredients separate, but we are just doing all dried ingredients. So we don't have to do that. We're just going to add our water at the end. So this is the sour cream powder. So that's just going to give it some yummy moisture in the recipe. A lot of times my zucchini recipes will have bananas. So I do like the idea that it has a lot of applesauce to kind of sweeten it up, but it also calls for a lot of sugar. So <laughs> that's why it's good. It's more like cake, right? You're getting banana cake. So we're going to do... I lost my sugar. Half a cup of brown sugar. I have my cute little bear in here to keep it soft. And then 
also half a cup of white sugar. So if you're keeping track, that's a little bit of sugar. But at least we didn't do half a cup of oil too. We just did applesauce, which is also more sugar. <laughs> it's good sugar though. Okay, it does call for vanilla, but I forgot to get my vanilla out. Awesome. We'll have vanilla-less, vanilla-less zucchini bread. Okay, so for the zucchini, I took my zucchini and kind of like moved it up, like broke it apart into smaller chunks. It says shredded zucchini in the recipe. I think this is going to be just fine. So if there's still a couple big pieces, if you're looking closely, my zucchini looks a little brown because stuff oxidizes more in Pennsylvania than it does in Utah. So surprise, surprise, my recipes look different and my food stays doesn't act the same here. So I'm just gonna add, so with all the powders I added, I needed about a cup of water, but I'm adding a little extra because I do have that zucchini that I wanted to get mixed up in there. So I'm just gonna stir it up and it's gonna make us a delicious quick batter dough. And um, this recipe you can put in chocolate chips, but I'm going to stick with my fruit theme and actually go with some cranberries. Doesn't that sound good? Zucchini cranberry bread? I think it sounds good. So I have some over here for one of our next recipes. Whoops. You're getting a sneak peek. Okay. Don't look yet. Don't look yet. I'm just going to put like a cup of cranberries in here too. That's also why I put extra water. Gonna be so delicious. So this recipe makes one giant loaf, like not the eight by four loaves, but like a nine by five loaf. But I'm gonna put it in these mini loaf pans that I just found in my cupboards. So you can also make it in muffins and um, probably spraying my computer. If you do it in muffin trays or these little mini loaf trays, it cooks much faster. And so that's what I want to do so that hopefully by the end of the demo, you're going to see the finished result. We'll see if my gluten-free flour worked and if all the leavenings work with gluten-free pow flour, powdered eggs, and then applesauce instead of the fat. So this consistency looks pretty good compared to what I usually do a quick bread recipe. It looks like normal zucchini bread or banana bread, right? I'm excited and it, it smells good and sweet. So this is going to be my dessert tonight. So I'm going to just put it in these trays. I'll show you, but Krista's going to do her recipe so that you're not sitting here waiting for me to dump it into bread loaf molds, right? Right. <laughs> I'm going to mute while you go, Krista, because this might be clanky and noisy. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Go for it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to make, um, I'm making, uh, we are doing, okay. Grab your mugs, right? Okay. I found the Christmas one, right? But I wanted to find two that were kind of the same. So I found the Halloween one too, right? <laughs> so these are my mugs I'm going to use, but we're going to do mug cakes. Okay. We're going to do an apple pie mug cake. And you probably looked at the, or saw on the specials that, um, we've got, Jody just used the applesauce, right? And you could use that in this recipe as well. But I'm going to use the Granny Smith apples. Um, anybody, have you tried those? Oh my gosh, they're so good. So, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So I want to show you because what I did was um, what I like to teach people. Let me just back up just a bit, just a bit, is that you can take pretty much any recipe out there and thrivalize it, right? So you can use your thrive foods to create that recipe, right? So what this recipe calls for, it calls for flour, the regular stuff, cinnamon, sugar, vanilla, you know, all the things that go into a little mini cake, right? And we're gonna make two of them, right? Two mugs, I got two mugs. And um, so you have a batter, right? And then you have the apple pie filling. So what I did um, last night is I actually made the apple pie filling. Now, most people are gonna pull their apple pie filling can from the cupboard, right? But this is how you can make it out of your own food storage. What if you don't have that? What if you don't want to run to the store? I don't have time to, right? Um, you know, and that's what we're creating is that we, I, I mean, I this, I just looked at the recipe last night and I just figured it out and got it done, right? So let me show you what I did. I took an entire pantry can 
Um, in fact, I have one, right? Where did it go? Oh, it's over here. It's hiding behind my computer. I took an entire can, pantry can, because the recipe calls for three pounds of apples. And it's hard to quantify that when you're actually looking at Thrive stuff, right? Because the apple isn't an apple, right? So you have no idea. You can't weigh it like a normal apple, right? Because there's no water in it. So it's not going to weigh the same. If you did three pounds of this, you'd have this many apples, right? I mean, you, so it was, that's what I kind of wanted to go over tonight was that, you know, I can imagine in my little brain of mine, I can imagine that these apples, there's probably three or four or five, and I cut the recipe in half, actually. So I figured that there would be probably three or four apples in this can, right? And so I used the recipe like that. So I put a whole cantry can of apples and I soaked them first. I wanted them nice and moist and and um, pliable and apple pie filling. That's what the, it is, right? I don't need a crunchy, but I need them moist, right? So I added a little bit of water and then I put some plastic wrap on the bowl. And you know how when you have it in the bowl, you sink in the plastic wrap so everything is moist? I did that and put it in the fridge. And I went, I had I had a little church thing to go to last night at 6.30. And so I left and went to there. I was gone for maybe 30, 45 minutes. Came back, my apples were absolutely perfect. But the water that was in the bottom, that's what I used to make my cinnamon apples. So after I they got all moist, they spent some time getting moist, right? And then I cooked them on the stove, just like you make apple pie filling, except that it was so easy and it didn't really take much time. I just added my cinnamon, added my cornstarch and check this out. This is what I mean. I sent, can you guys see that? <clears throat> Let me do this a little bit. Okay. Okay. Check this out though. Look at how, I mean, this is like ooey gooey, like apple pie filling, right? The, it turned out amazing. And I'm telling you, I texted Jody last night. I'm like, oh, I just want to stick this over vanilla ice cream and call it done, <laughs> which is a thing. It could be a thing. But now I have like a grouping of apple pie filling in my fridge for the next, you know, few days if I need apple pie filling cake, mug cake, which is what we're going to make. So I didn't want to, um, I, we try and keep these very short and sweet, right? So um, I walked you through that. Now I'm going to walk you through actually making the mug cake, okay? Krista, so, what? Is there any way you can make your picture bigger? Because we we just see you in a tile. Oh, um, I cannot, but okay. I think you can. I'll make I'll pin her. Usually, whoever's oh. chatting should be the. It's okay. There we go. Yeah, you know, perfect. You know, Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes right. it depends how you have your settings. So if you put it to speaker view. It'll make big whoever is speaking, just so you know. But I have her pin now. Thanks. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to put my apple pie filling off to the side a little bit, and I'm going to start with some flour, okay? And we're going to um, whisk together for a whisk. Whisk, okay. We're going to stick in here flour. We're going to add some sugar. This is just stuff that you usually have in your house, right? Baking powder and cinnamon. I'm gonna get it all nice and happy in my little bowl. And we are going to add a little bit of milk. And it says stir after each addition. This is the, the <laughs> this is the stuff that takes the time, right? But it's still not very much time if I were to do this like, it, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to add vanilla. Oh, butter's next. Sorry. I have four tablespoons of butter, and it just started solidifying. <laughs> but I'm still going to put it in there. Because that's how I roll. I'm such a rebel. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to add the vanilla. One of these days I'll show you, I, I started making my own vanilla because I took a trip last year and bought actual real vanilla beans and came home and now I have vanilla for 40 years. That's going to be a food storage topic idea one day. <laughs> my 40 year old vanilla. <laughs> okay, 
That looks pretty good. It's mixed pretty well. And so all we do to make this recipe, because I have my apple pie filling, right? And I, this is cinnamon sugar, by the way. All we're going to do is I'm going to get a spoon and I'm going to get my mug. I'm going to do one, two, three. Um, I think it's, let's see, a little bit of cinnamon sugar and a scoop of apple pie filling. I'm telling you, this is so, ugh, I've been eating them, waiting to get on tonight. Yeah, that's high roll. All right, so we'll do another three scoops. So basically this is a recipe for two mugs and I'm just gonna divide the batter evenly. Sugar. Scoop of apple pie filling. Look at how yummy that, <laughs> it's so good. I wish you, wish we had smell-o-vision. Smell-o-vision would be good. <laughs> I just wish I was making that one or else at your house to eat it with you. That's what I wish. That too, right? <laughs> okay, looks like we're gonna get probably about six scoops of this batter out of here. It's gonna be perfect. I know, because I'm making two and I need someone to share it with. <laughs> Somebody come over. <laughs> All right, so there's that. Finish these off with a little bit of sugar. And another scoop of apple pie filling. Woo! <laughs> It's like, oh, it's like caramelized. It's so yummy. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is going to be my new favorite for ice cream toppings. Cinnamon apples. It's kind of like the Cracker Barrel. You guys ever been to Cracker Barrel and had their cinnamon apples? Mm, yes. All right. Then we're going to top it off with a little bit of sugar. All right. One's the elf. One's the creepy. All right, so now I'm gonna throw them in the microwave for two to three minutes. All right, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Jody. We'll check those when we come back. I'm making a mess. <laughs> Do what? You're making a mess? Making a mess. Yes. I'm, gonna... I'm making a mess too, but okay. that's okay. This is live TV people, right? So I cut open these oranges and they look, it looks like a grapefruit. Okay. Doesn't oh. that look like grapefruit? It does. Are they blood oranges? They could be blood oranges. I did not order blood oranges. It says cara cara, but they taste like orange. So oh, our cars are pink. Okay. Well, it scared me. I was like, that's going to be some bitter cocktail meatballs. So but just to tell you, the apple pie batter is really good. Well, why are you rubbing it in? All I get is zucchini bread. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm almost done this. So what I'm going to do, you guys, is make, we're making something delicious, of course. Oh. This is a, an appetizer, like a meatball appetizer. So I'm going to put, oh, I just used my measuring cup I needed. That's okay. So this is a cranberry, like I was going to do, we've done the cranberry salsa before. It's super good. I thought about just doing a cranberry sauce, but we're doing, it's like a marmalade -y cranberry sweet it's too hot it's too hot here sweet recipe here and it's for like an appetizer like i just did super bowl all the food for that so it's on my brain feeding a lot of people 
So it has honey, it has chili sauce. So it's got a little bit of zip. I think I have a clap on my hand. Okay, and while Krista was cooking, I was zesting that orange. It looked orange, and then all of a sudden it looked pink and they're huge. Look at this huge orange. So I got my zest, zestfully clean, put it in there, and I gotta put, oh, no, my heat turned off. This is why I don't have a professional cooking show. So we want your honey to be melty. And then I got to put in my orange juice. So I was almost done. So I'm going to cut. We try to do things as much in advance as we can. But sometimes it's not perfect. Oh, this one's not as pink, but it kind of tricks you. Like it looks a little bit grapefruity-ish. Oh, so I'm squeezing. This is, these are really juicy though. They're so good. <laughs> so I guess it's about two oranges worth to get half a cup. And I'm just doing a half recipe right now because we already ate dinner. But my husband only ate a little bit of dinner because he wanted to eat all this food that I made. I can't use that one. This is close enough. We're good. Okay, got my orange juice. Now you're supposed to use cranberries, but we're using freeze-dried cranberries. So I'm going to get them soft, softened in here. And there's kind of a ratio. So it called for like a bag of cranberries. Um... I'm actually gonna do extra orange juice because my cranberries are freeze dried. So they're not, they're gonna need a little bit of liquid. Don't worry, I'm not using the one I dropped on the floor. And my dog didn't try to eat it off the floor. He only likes treats, doesn't want fruit. Stinking Zeke, you didn't even eat the orange. Okay, so this is gonna get softened and then you're gonna add a little bit more zip to flavor it up. And you can moosh. Oh, now he's like, she did something. He wants to come and be on camera. Okay. So this is going to just get nice and gooey. And now my hands are so dirty, but I'm okay. I'll wipe it on my pants. And I called for a wee bit of cayenne pepper. And I am not like a super spicy girl. So I like I have these measuring spoons that say like pinch and dash. They're so cute. So this is like a 1 16th of a teaspoon. So that's all the spice that I'm gonna get in there. You wouldn't want it too spicy because then I can't eat it. Okay, and then I'm gonna just put in some salt. You can put normal amounts of salt and pepper, but cayenne pepper makes me a little nervous. And then you can do what you want in terms of meatballs. So you could make, they had like a really good recipe. And I love what Krista said, like, we just go find recipes and we're like, how can we make this with Thrive? You can almost make anything with Thrive. So this recipe had like a yummy, um, like grass fed beef, all kinds of delicious homemade meatballs. And I was like, I'm buying frozen meatballs from the store. So that's what we got. Okay, so then you let this sit and simmer for about 10 minutes. And then you can kind of mash up your cranberries, but I'm gonna show you. So it does kind of look like cranberry sauce, but it's actually that spicy and sweet, and it's going to just coat these meatballs that I have cooking. So I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So I'm just kind of chomping chop mashing them because if they were fresh you'd want to like mash them a little bit in there anyways and it almost makes it like a marmalade or a jelly so that's it so easy and i just love that about freeze-dried food and thrive and powders like you can cook stuff so much faster because you're not doing all of the all the extra prep that is involved with regular cooking okay i'm gonna move this out of the way because I'm doing you a twofer right now. So I'm doing my second recipe. So like I said, I had Super Bowl on the brain. So we always do a lot of yummy appetizers and veggie trays. And you go buy one at like Wegmans and it's a million dollars for a tiny little thing of dip, right? So I'm going to make a 
cranberry, no, not cranberry. We just did cranberry. Cucumber dill dip. I'm making a mess. My recipe's on my phone. Don't worry, I'll wash everything up. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a half batch again because like I said, we already ate everything in this house. Krista gets to eat dinner after our show. I always have to eat dinner and then cook. So I'm gonna just beat this cream cheese in here till it's a little bit whipped. Then I'm going to add mayonnaise. Do you ever order online and think you're getting something big and it's like this little? That happened to me with shampoo. Well, I ordered some mayonnaise online and I thought it was a good deal. Look at how big it is. It's as big as my head. It was from Costco, but I didn't expect it to be quite that big. So <laughs> that's <laughs> my year supply of mayonnaise in one jug. <laughs> it's a little big, way a bit big. Okay, so I need half a cup, but we use this to make, if you guys ever watched our cooking demo about um, Cafe Rio copycats, I use this mayo, I use a lot of mayo to make our, the tomatillo dressing. So mm. it is worth having a lot of mayo on hand, I guess. You never run out. And I liked what Krista said too, like if it's an emergency or you don't have like a can of pie filling, like you can make your own. How awesome is that? That is a big reason why we do food storage. It's not just for the end of the world or the zombie apocalypse. It's for everyday emergencies or you want dessert on Sunday and you forgot to order something, you can make something like super delicious from scratch and not very hard. So we got that. I'm gonna put in half a tablespoon of lemon juice. This recipe calls for green onions. And I'm going to tell you a secret. So Thrive has awesome green onions, which I never buy green onions because I use three sticks and then throw the rest away every time. But so for some reason, when I was looking in my cupboard, I discovered, guess how many cans of these open in my cupboard? Any guesses? Okay, I'll tell you because I can't see any comments anyways. Three! And they all have about this much gone. So... That's not the best use of, I mean, at least these don't really get discolored. So they're fine, I'll use them eventually, but you use like a tablespoon here and there, so they last forever. But apparently I have a year supply open in my pantry right now. Then I'm gonna use dill, you can use fresh dill, but whoever has fresh dill on hand, unless you have like a cute little herb garden, which I might this summer, we'll see. We'll see how life treats me. I'm just gonna put in not too much because it's when it's dried, it's a little more potent. And then the secret ingredient is cucumber. So this recipe, so again, I just got a recipe. I was like, I want to make a cucumber dip. That sounds delicious. And I'm just stirring my cranberry. It smells spicy. I don't know if I can eat it. Um, so we have these cranberry cucumbers. I got all the C words, so it's hard for me. Um, and I haven't really used them in a lot of recipes. I used them for like an egg salad sandwich. I don't have a good measuring cup here. Two cucumbers, probably about like. So I decided I wanted to try it in this. Mine have been open in my cupboard for a while. And I guess like same thing with my zucchini. It got a little brown, but I tasted them and they're still so good. So we're going with it. Now it says that you don't have to like squeeze the moisture out of them. But then some people in the comments said that then it was too runny. So I think it's actually going to be perfect with, um, with just the dry, but you could add a little more moisture if you needed to. This recipe also called for cayenne. I don't know why everybody wants to be so spicy, but it's stressing me out a little. So I'm only going to do maybe half of a pinch because <laughs> I'm not going to eat this. And then also salt and pepper. So and I'm just, like I said, I'm doing a little half batch here. So if it doesn't look like I'm adding much flavor, it's because I'm not doing a big, huge recipe. So we'll see how my color looks with these cukes. Just gonna stir it up. That actually looks awesome. 
hopefully it tastes good. Looks can be deceiving. So the taste test is the real test. Let me show you. And then I'm gonna grab, when, while Krista's going, I'm gonna pull everything else out of the oven and I'll come back at the very, very end. But let me show you up close. It's like a good, it's like a veggie dip made out of veggies. So it's not just like a ranch veggie dip. It's actually a healthy veggie dip. It's healthy with its one cup of mayonnaise and cream cheese in it, right? <laughs> so even though my cucumbers were a little bit discolored, they're still totally fine. So don't be afraid of your food storage if it's been open for a little bit. Just try it and use it. I tasted mine and they're actually like a really yummy, it almost was like a potato chip kind of. They're a little bit sweet um, and just a little bit of crunch. So we're going to taste test all this in a little bit. I'm going to stick it in the fridge. We'll pull out some veggies and see how it goes. This is almost done simmering. So I'm just going to pour. You can see it thickened up. It's like nice and gooey. So I'm going to pull out the meatballs and pour it over, pour it into this pot. And we'll check on the bread. But in the meantime, Krista has two more delicious, pretty easy, low-key recipes for you. Okay, Krista. Okay. The mess now? <laughs> I yes. made a big mess. It's a big no worries. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> it's live TV, Jody. Remember? Okay. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. So um coming back to me, uh, we are gonna make a salsa and um we're gonna make jam or jelly. Like we're gonna do all of that in literally like five minutes in the next five to ten minutes. Okay. So um salsa. I wanted to kind of tell you guys a little bit about how I make salsa. Who's made homemade salsa before? Raise your hand. I see some cameras on, right? Everybody's done it, right? When you get that recipe, right, do you ever substitute for things like maybe there's jalapenos and you'd rather have green chilies or, right, we are going to do that with Thrive Stuff because that is the beauty of Thrive is that you can, you can do whatever it is you want to do, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to read this recipe to you and then I'm going to show you what I actually changed and how easy it is to change things and, and get it however you want it to be, Right. So it says three ripe mangoes. That's a lot of mango. I don't need that much salsa in my life right now because I made some salsa for Super Bowl and I still have some, right? So we're going to cut that way in half, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to make exactly what I want to make versus what the recipe calls for, okay? Um, it also calls for one medium red bell pepper chopped, half a cup of chopped red onion, fourth a cup packed fresh cilantro leaves, one jalapeno, one large lime, and salt to taste, salt and pepper to taste, right? That's the recipe. That's a lot of salsa. Anybody agree with that? I think that's a ridiculous amount of salsa, unless you're hosting a Super Bowl party, right? I mean, yeah, I put salsa on everything. I live on a, in Arizona, but I don't need that much in my life right now today, okay? So we're going to still make a mango salsa because that's what we're using is mangoes that are on sale for the case lot um, sale. And what I did was I prepped some mangoes for me because, you know, salsa is like juicy and tangy and lots of flavor and all the things, right? Well, mangoes, when you open a can of mangoes, now let me show you what they, they look like. So this is what my mangoes look like, right? I have an open can, but you'll see that there's some that are beautiful and my hands are clean. Don't worry. Like, like these. These are the little squares, right? These are awesome, perfect little mango slices. But then sometimes you get these guys, right? They're a little shriveled, a little more hard. They're still mangoes, right? But they've just gone through that freeze drying process, you know, and, and they, they just shrink a little bit, right? So they're not as, they're a little tougher, if, if I can say that, right? So what, and I'm not gonna want anything crunchy in my salsa, right? So what I did to prep these was I actually put them in a Ziploc bag, okay? And being the fruity I am, I love fruit. <laughs> I put a little pineapple with mine too. So I sprinkled a little bit of our pineapple in there as well. And then I just put a little bit of water to like do half the line. And I, I mushed it up so it all got wet, right? And I put it in the fridge. That's what I did to prep my mangoes, right? And you can see... You can see that there's a little bit of juice at the bottom, right? See here? We're actually going to use that as well. And because we, I don't want to have to add any water, but I'm adding other freeze-dried ingredients. So it needs some juice to get in there, right? Because again, I don't want anything crunchy in my 
in my salsa, right? Okay, so let's start putting this together. This is gonna be really easy and fun. Okay, so I'm gonna put my mango because I had to put a little bit of pineapple in there. I just, you know, I just spent a week in Costa Rica. I'm used to pineapple every day. <laughs> um, okay, so you can see that it looks the same, right? Because it soaked up all the water, but you can, if I squish it on the side, it's actually pretty soft. So it's going to be perfect for my salsa, but it holds its shape really well. So you can see that in the actual, um, in my mangoes and pineapple. Okay. Another thing I want to talk to you about is this is red peppers. I am not a fan of, I mean, I, I like peppers, but I don't like big chunks of them. I don't know if anybody is the same way, but when you open our peppers, you know, I mean, this is, this is what you get, right? It's a long pepper. It's great. It smells fabulous, but I don't, I don't want to eat this in my salsa. Right. So I actually took a knife to mine and chopped mine up really, really fine. Right. It's always so, fun. I love that our peppers are big. Cause I eat them with hummus, like straight oh. and I make fajitas with them big. So it's nice that they're big. Cause you can always make them smaller. Right. Yes. Like the yes, cucumbers are, were tiny. They're like, I don't know if you can see me. They were like this big. I'm like, I want big cucumber chunks, but you can't, you can't <laughs> throw them. Right. You only cut them smaller like I did with the zucchini. So exactly. That's, I mean, that's the beauty. So I'm going to put, and in fact, um, there were red onions in my recipe, right? I'm going to put our chopped onions. You could put onion slices if you wanted to, um, but I'm going to put onions because I love onions. And actually based on, so here, here's the other thing. And some people are not going to like this, <laughs> but this is kind of how I cook. So you're just going to have to, but this is what makes Thrive Thrive. It makes it so wonderful is that I can kind of guess versus like following a recipe, right? So this is where you get a little creative in your recipes. Like I, I did this much because this is what the recipe called for, right? But that's too much onion. I can tell just from pouring it in there. I don't want a whole bite of onion, right? So same goes with the pepper. I'm gonna just kind of base it off of the amount of mangoes I have in there. And to my liking, I'm gonna pour what I want and what I need, okay? Anybody have questions about that? Because I know it's not traditional, but I don't like a whole lot of pepper. So why put it all in there? Now, this one I do love a lot. These are the green chilies. I'm going to use these instead of jalapenos, just because I do prefer green chilies over jalapenos, right? Sometimes you'll read like, oh, this much onion is this is a whole onion. And it's like you said, it might be wrong. You kind of have to gauge it by, because an onion could be an onion this big. I just got one, a white onion that was this big. I'm like, that would be way too much for one little yellow onion, you know? Right. And then if you use a medium instead of a small, you have to use half of it and put the rest in the fridge and then throw it away in a week because you haven't used it, right? Exactly. Another reason why we love Thrive. Okay. Lime juice. I don't want to use, cause that, that's what I'll do. I'll use a half of it for lime juice and then put it in my fridge and it'll sit there for a week and I'll have to throw it away. I like, do you guys ever use this? It's true lime. They have true lemon as well. It's great. Um, and I'll, I'm just going to use one packet of it for the lime juice that I need, right? Just as that little zing, which is awesome. And you can see, can you guys tell that it got a little dry? Um, you can tell when I scrape the bottom of the bowl, there's no liquid. Can you see that? Can you tell that there's none? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water. Because I want a little bit of liquid left in the bottom of the bowl, right? Because you have that liquid at the bottom of the bowl when you're doing salsa. But if you like a lot of liquid, pour some more water in there, right? I just want to get all those flavors meshing together to create. You can see the liquid in the bottom now, right? All right. So we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to my liking. And we have salsa, mango pineapple salsa, because I changed it because I'm the rebel, remember? <laughs> and we'll come back and try it in a minute. So let me do my second recipe for you really quick. We have a question where you buy the lime or lemon packets. Now Thrive has seasonal lemon and lime powder, 
So watch for it in the summer because they come in the cans and they're awesome. But I don't, so I have a bunch of that on hand. So where do you buy the lime ones, Krista? You can buy them on Amazon. Amazon has them. Um, you can buy them at Walmart. Um, yeah, they're, they, they're, they're definitely in my food storage, but I also have the Thrive one too, but I'll never use a whole pantry can. <laughs> so I keep my lemonade and limeade for, um, for emergency purposes. And then, um, and then I use the little packets because it's great in the packets because that's all you need to use is just this much lime, right? This is like a wedge of lime. So you right. can kind of gauge what you're doing. All right. Next recipe. This is going to be a fun one. I forgot a bowl. Uh, Charmin, you... Arizona, Walmart. Probably you could ask someone and I'm sure they have them everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could, if you order online Walmart, it's on there as well. So it's in the seasoning section or the lime juice section, wherever that is. Okay. Another thing that's on sale, blackberries. Okay. We're going to make jam in like literally five minutes. This is a really easy, very quick recipe. And there's just kind of one rule of thumb is that you can use pretty much any fruit you want. You can make it a jam. You can make it a jelly. Making a jelly is going to be a lot um, more time intensive because a jelly is no pulp, no none of the fruit. It's just the juice. And jelly, um, a jam is actually got the fruit in it. And so, um, and what I'm going to do with my blackberries is I am going to twirl them in my Ninja, okay? Um, only because they have seeds, right? And I would love to do a blackberry jelly, but I've done homemade blackberry jelly and it takes forever to actually get your juice out of those seeds and stuff. So we're just going to bring it away in. But this recipe is good for pretty much any fruit you want. You could use blueberries, you could use um, whatever you want. And my point in doing this is to get about a half a cup of fruit or a fourth a cup of fruit in powder. So I'm going to pour, that looks pretty even. I think we'll see what happens. Actually, let me do a little bit more because I'd rather have more than not enough. Put the lid on. Okay. Went down a little bit, right? This is my favorite part. Is sniffing that once you get done blending it. Oh, it's so good. It smells so good. And I, the color is just amazing. We're going to do a half a cup. I mean, a fourth cup. So how do I do my jams and my jellies is I do the ratio of two to one. Okay. So that is a fourth a cup of blackberries. Can you see that? Okay. It's just dust, right? And there's a little bit of fruit in there, but um, I wanted to kind of blend the seeds because I hate, I don't like the seeds. So now we're going to just. So when I say two to one, one is going to be your fruit, two is going to be your sugar. So we're at a quarter cup of fruit. So we're going to add a half a cup of sugar. And I don't need very much jam. You can make as much as you want. If you're doing a cup of fruit, how many cups of sugar? Two, All right? So you can do that if you want. I got blackberry stuck on my nails, sorry. <laughs> I like to mix this a little bit so you get kind of like it mixed together. And then here's the other free thinking point of Thrive, right? We're going to add water to your desired consistency. How easy is that, right? It's easy. Anyone can make jam. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit and I'm going to stir. Start getting that nice and incorporated. And you can see that it's pretty thick, right? Because there's not a whole lot of water in there. So it just depends on how you'd like to spread it on your toast, really. In fact, that, and it will thicken up as, as you do. But that, <laughs> that's pretty, 
that's pretty thick actually already how did I do that I've never done that before but you can see how I I will actually make sure that all the sugar is dissolved and then I'll put it in the fridge and that will actually thicken it up quite a bit so but this is the consistency that you're kind of looking for okay um and that is it that is all you do to make jam or jelly that's it that is it just sugar and water and do it to the consistency you want. I love doing strawberries because then I get the thick strawberries with the, I blend some and then I chop others. So it's nice and chunky because I like the strawberry chunky, but I mean, it is the perfect, I will take like an angel food cake and I'll, I'll tear it into pieces and dip that in this oh, to die for you can use it over ice cream. You can use it over on your toast every morning. You can do whatever it is you want, but you're not, you know how when you buy a jar of jelly and I open it and it sits for probably a year, year and a half before I use the whole thing. Cause we don't use it a whole lot in my house, but this, I will use this much in the next few months, right? Which is awesome. So you can make, and I can do another flavor in three weeks if I, if I'm out of it, right? So that's the whole point is that I'm not wasting food either. I love not wasting food and only making enough for what my family needs. So, all right, those are my two recipes. There's also a ginormous jar of jelly that you can accidentally get at Costco too. <laughs> um, a friend told me about that huge jelly, just saying. <laughs> Okay, so we are almost done, you guys. I'm just going to show you my final products. So I tasted the meatballs. And if you like spicy, you'll love them. They're a little spicy for me. I'm not going to lie. So um, you may want to up the honey a little bit um, to kind of sweeten it. But I think my kids and my husband will love this because they're like spicy. Um, we make like a cranberry salsa that has jalapeno peppers well the green chili peppers that's a little spicy sweet that's very good so it kind of reminds me of that but with that chili sauce added in it was a little a little my mouth's on fire but it tasted delicious so I just stirred in frozen meatballs you could make them from scratch like I said okay this dip I just tasted it and it's so good do you ever make like the one with the ranch packets but half the time I think I'm gonna make it and I think I have ranch packets and I don't. So I just tasted it. You can't really, like the cucumbers, they refreshed in there. So they're not too crunchy. Like I was worried if they wouldn't get all the way softened, but it was so good. So that's one that I would definitely eat again. I'm not gonna double dip because my family's gonna wanna eat that. Okay, look at my cute bread bowls. Okay. Um, Sorry, not allowed to eat on camera. Look how good they are now. This they is awesome. flour and they rose and they cooked in just that time of that cooking demo. Um, they smell awesome. I'm going to cut into one. Whenever something gluten-free turns out, it makes my life so happy. Oh my gosh. Look at this. You got zucchini chunks in there. You got cranberry chunks in there. I'm pretty excited. I'm not gonna lie. So you might have gotten the mug cakes, Krista, but now I have yummy zucchini bread. So <laughs> that's me <laughs> happy after, ever after, right? I'm happy makes my mouth happy. So we'll see if it's as good as I'm hoping. It's kind of funny we do our recipes and we're like, you guys get to watch us when we're the guinea pigs, right? So here's my salsa and ended up. Here's how it ended up. Can you see that? Okay. There's my salsa with my chips. This is, I'm going to go eat dinner now. Um, and then my blackberry jam, I'm actually going to stick it back in, but I, I have my toast ready to go. I just have to toast it. But I'm not going to make you guys wait. <laughs> oh, we put the jam on the bread. See, we got to do this together. This bread is good. I'm not just saying that. I would legit eat this. I'm going to legit eat it. It's so good. Oh, this is so good. And then I haven't, touch this yet but it's nice and warm right it's nice and warm can you see the inside it's hard to see inside. let me apple pie there we go apple pie but here's the this is so good oh 
Mmm. <laughs> it's a real <laughs> apple pie. And you made it's it. It's real apple pie. Mm. That's amazing. Okay. And you guys, the bread, oh. it is good. And it had no fat in it. It had powdered sour cream, powdered eggs, applesauce, dehydrated. That's a very cool recipe. I'm excited with how well that turned out. For real. That was a good experiment. Oh, did I keep you? Did I keep myself pinned when it was your turn? I hope not. It doesn't matter. I think you were pinned when it was my turn. That's all good. Okay. It's all good. It's all good. All right, guys, we're going to finish up. So I'm going to tell you real quick. If you want to order any of these. I don't know if I'm big or not. <clears throat> Spotlight for everyone. Don't make me big because I'm eating. I think I'm big now. <laughs> I don't know if that was working. Anyways, if you want to order these, get with whoever invited you to the demo and they'll help you get set up. If you do it through the delivery service, any of these cases, I put on the flyer there. I think I have the prices. Um, so that's through the delivery service. It's a monthly auto ship, but if you just want to order these and then stop, you can cancel and there's no penalties. So it's super easy. But if it's through the delivery service, it's free shipping. Every case is over $100. So anything over $100 is free shipping. And one thing I like to do is get a case and then also get a small can. So you can open them and start using them without having to worry about that shelf life or trying to finish a whole giant number 10 can within a you know one year open shelf life or if you're in, your, you're in a humid area like me that's even shorter so I've been starting to use a lot of the smaller cans unless it's things that I use a lot of in a big recipe so um that's one way to do it and if you just want to try things and you're not interested in the cases there are still really good monthly specials so um I'll put in the email that I send out with the replay like the monthly specials as well and um I am big <laughs> okay good Oh, I thought they meant I'm big so I can eat the big cans. I'm big on the screen. Thank you. <laughs> I, I saw somebody's comment that my bag was close to that stove. So I'm glad I didn't light my house on fire in front of you guys. Sorry about that. Live TV, that would be an adventure. Um, there also is one other thing going on. We love cooking for other people and groups. We, if you live close to us, we'll come to your house and actually cook in person. If you want to do an online demo and invite your friends, like we love to have fun and cook and teach about food storage and freeze-dried food. So if you refer friends to us, you can earn 30% of whatever they end up ordering in free food. So if you like free food and you like being a party host, give us a call or a text or an email. And that 30% promo goes through the end of March. So it is a really good way, especially if you're like not sure what you want to get yet and you want us to kind of teach you some more things or maybe showcase a few other items um, or like a meal in a jar class. It's something very, very cool that we're happy to do. And then you can get some free goodies because the cheapest way to eat is to eat free food, right? Who here has earned a lot of free food from Thrive? Yes. Okay. So, um, Hit us up if that's something you're interested in. And if you like cooking and want to do this for people, hit us up. You can be a consultant and do this with us too. It's super fun. Like I don't ever feel like I'm being like a food salesman. I just cook and I love cooking and I feed an army every day in my house. And it's super fun. And especially like with preparedness, being passionate about that. Um, it's a double, you know, double whammy. It's wonderful to get to get people food in their homes. So when COVID happens and you can't buy beef at the store, you have beef in your basement. Like there is no better feeling to know that you, um, that you can feed your family no matter what happens. So that's something that we're both very passionate about and, um, we love doing it with Thrive. So if we're going to stick around, I'm going to end the recording, but we'll stick around for questions. If there's anything specific for today, if you want to jump off, thank you for being there. Watch for the replay. Like I said, just give me a couple of days. Uh, it takes me a while to get everything typed up and edit the video and everything like that. So I'm going to stop recording. Bye, everyone. Say bye, Krista. Bye. I want to come eat all your food. And I want to eat yours. <laughs>